Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by random error. You should then be able to describe how we can reduce the effect of random errors. This is part of the working scientifically aspect of the GCSE specification. Working scientifically is common to biology, chemistry and physics. Together, required practicals plus working scientifically represents at least 15% of the marks in your exams. OK, now in science experiments, we often use scientific equipment to take measurements. Whenever we measure anything in science, we want our value to be accurate. An accurate measurement is one that's close to the true value. Imagine that we ask three students to measure the temperature of a solution, and we provide the students with the same thermometer. We've tested this thermometer, and we know that it works correctly. Now, when you use a thermometer, your eye should be level with the top of the coloured liquid. So, for example, student A is reading the thermometer correctly. This student finds that the temperature of the solution is 55 degrees Celsius. Now, because this student is using the thermometer correctly, this is likely to be an accurate reading. In other words, the actual temperature of the solution is 55 degrees Celsius. Student B is reading the thermometer incorrectly. They're looking downwards at the coloured liquid, rather than straight on. Scientists call this a parallax error. Student B reads the temperature as 56 degrees Celsius. So due to parallax error, student B's reading is less accurate than student A's. Student C is also reading the thermometer incorrectly. They're looking upwards at the coloured liquid. And again, this is a parallax error. Student C reads the temperature as 54 degrees Celsius. So again, student C's reading is less accurate than student A's. So as we've seen, different students can read the same thermometer from different angles. And because of parallax error, this leads to inaccurate readings. However, even the same student can make inaccurate readings. It's very unlikely that student A will always read the thermometer correctly every single time they use it. Scientists call errors like this random errors, and random errors cause random variations in our results. Now, parallax error due to reading a thermometer can be overcome by using a digital thermometer, such as the one I'm showing here. In this case, we're reading the number from a display and there's no parallax error. Another example of random error is when we use a timer to measure how long something takes to happen. Imagine that we're timing how long it takes for a chemical reaction to finish. Different students have different reaction times and will start and stop the clock at different points. And again, this will introduce random errors into our results. I'm showing you here the results of an experiment. A group of students reacted a one centimetre strip of magnesium with acid and measured the highest temperature reached in the reaction. They carried out the experiment with different lengths of magnesium and did each experiment two times. The students then calculated mean values. As you can see, the repeats vary, and this variation is caused by random errors. There'll be random errors in how the students measure the lengths of the magnesium strips. And if the students use the thermometer incorrectly, there'll be random errors in measuring the temperature. Now, we can never completely avoid all sources of random error. However, we can reduce the effect of random errors by taking more measurements and calculating a new mean. So in this case, the students did another repeat and recalculated their mean values. And again, doing this reduces the effect of random errors. Now, I just want to make one final point on this. Some students call random errors human errors. This is not correct, as the term human error is not used at GCSE. You'll find plenty of questions on this topic in my Vision Workbook which you can get by clicking on the link above.